Hey everybody, this is Kieran Hanlon uh, from Professor Hanlon's Base Tips, uh, coming to you from the State University of New York at Fredonia. Uh, today I want to talk about <clears throat> something that I think could be a controversial topic. I hope it's not. Uh, but I want to talk about marking the fingerboard on the base. Um, this is uh, one of those things that I, I do believe is pretty unique to our instrument in that people playing at the professional level, um, it is acceptable in my opinion, uh, to mark the fingerboard. Uh, whereas you may not see that as likely on violin, viola, and cello. Uh, that conversation is altogether separ uh, separate, but that's just an interesting point about this, that it is much more common for us uh, professional level players to be involved in marking the fingerboard. Uh, so uh, this was something that I had no clue um, would be acceptable uh, until I was in my undergraduate degree um, at the University of Michigan, uh, and I. So I had uh, Diana Gannon as my main classical teacher, Robert Hurst as my main jazz teacher, uh, and they were both huge proponents of marking the fingerboard. And that's sort of how I got started in this. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone knows my backstory. It's sort of uh, not important to go through every single bit of it, but I, did, I was a very uh, late comer uh, to the base, starting in a serious way um, in my freshman year at Michigan, actually. Um, more on that some other time. But, but in any case, um, I was really playing catch-up, and Diana first suggested it for, for that reason. Um, there's a number of other uh, noted professionals. Up top would be Edgar Meyer um, that have, have marked fingerboards, and uh, I think it really is worth doing and extremely helpful um, at all levels of playing, actually. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about what I mark and then how I think about it, okay? Um, so, uh, let's just start with what I use. These are Avery garage sale um, type color coding labels, however you want to, however you want to describe what that is. It's hard to say, but you know, imagine you have a garage sale, you say everything that's red is five dollars, everything that's blue is one dollar, that kind of label. And you got to have the small ones, the really big circles are less helpful because they can cover two notes depending on where they are. Uh, so the nice small ones like you just saw, uh, will be generally very helpful to you. Um, and I put those you know, right on the fingerboard and then I'll, I'll use a marker um, to just color them in so they're, they're black and they don't really stand out in, a, in an extremely obvious way. But you can still see them um, even as they are black. Um, so whatever kind of marker you want to use. Sharpie works, no problem with that, it's the fumes off of it tend to last. So you'll be playing the bass and um, it, it can be a bit much. So I, I've been going more with the Expo um, non-odor, whatever, Expo marker. So um, so I'll just give you a quick close-up here. Um, you can see how they look here uh, on thumb position, down here through the middle range, and then in first position and half position I have them um, right here on the side. And the reason I do that <clears throat> is because you got to be able to see them without doing one of these, right? Um, so so down here, you know, it's a matter of you're going to have to obviously turn like that. Uh, but here, if they were on the side, it's really tricky. If you keep them on the front of the, of the fingerboard like this, you can see them easily. Same thing up here. So the notes that I put them on, starting in the low position, uh, would, would be first finger half position. So for on the, let's, let's do it on the D string for simplicity. So you'll have E flat there. And then I just go a whole step. So E flat, F, G, A, B natural. Um, those are the D string notes that those dots will cover. Uh, of course, you can do the math and figure out what they cover on the other uh, other strings. And then in thumb position, um, I have basically two G triads. So G, B, D, G, B, D. Um, and I find that uh, that really works out well for, for mapping things. Um, in the low positions, uh, you may have noticed those are all whole steps, right? And so therefore, more or less, our fingers are going to be either on a dot or dead center between two dots, right? Here's what I always tell my students about this, and it sounds a bit like an advertisement for a vacation destination, but what you would say is that intonation is a multi-sensory experience, right? Intonation is also a huge topic. Um, for our purposes right now, what I'm talking about is using your eyes um, to orient yourself, using your ears to check and really make sure you're blending, you know, if you got your finger on the dot, you're just pegging it, but you're not with anybody else, obviously we need to adjust, right? Using dots is not, doesn't mean we don't adjust, right? Um, and then using feel, touch, uh, to remind ourselves, um, you know, Jeff Turner once said to me, you know, we learn best through our kinesthetic systems, right? 
Um, so in, in that sense, we will have the fingers down um, and uh, remember how it feels when we get a note really well in tune so that we can hopefully get back to it in a specific way. Um, so uh, I always recommend, you know, I mean, like I said, it's very important to, to use the eyes in a way to get started. For me, now that I'm older, what I end up doing um, dot-wise is usually uh, helping, uh, having them help me make sure I'm in a really good starting place and then really relying on excellent hand shape to continue to have good intonation. Um, also, sometimes in the orchestra, it's super loud. There's a lot going on. It's hard to hear. It can be really nice to, to, to just get a starting point. But again, you always have to do the multi-sensory thing. So you have eyesight, um, ears, and touch all contributing to good intonation. So, um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, you can send me an email at hanlon at fredonia.edu. That's H-A-N-L-O-N at fredonia.edu. Um, and, uh, yeah, anything that you'd like clarified or, or further points you'd like to discuss, by all means, let me know. Okay, thanks.